Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Checking in again from Thacker Pass. It's April 25th at 6 a.m. And I'm here at Thacker Pass, Pahimaha, in northern Nevada, traditional territory of the Western Shoshone, Northern Paiute. This land is proposed to become an open pit lithium mine, the largest in the United States, one of the largest in the world. And open pit mining is a profoundly destructive activity to the land. It involves bulldozing all the life off the surface of the landscape, uh, scraping away, crushing, destroying everything that lives there, and digging or blasting gigantic holes into the earth with explosives, with machinery and heavy equipment. This is happening all over the world right now and has been happening for many, many years, of course. But here at Pahimaha, here at Thacker Pass, we're on the front lines of a new frontier in the extraction economy. And that is what's being called green extractivism. Turn the camera around here and show you Doris and Dean, two brave people who are standing here in prayer this morning, standing up for the land, standing up for their ancestors who lived here for many generations, who were killed here in many cases, fighting for the land, fighting for the water, fighting for this place. They're here this morning to block access to this road, which is the main construction site in Thacker Pass. This is where the mining company, Lithium Nevada, has been working for several months now with heavy equipment, with bulldozers, scraping away the surface of the land, disturbing this beautiful, sacred, important site, killing the animals, polluting the water, starting to drive away all the wildlife to break the migratory corridors. That's happening in Thacker Pass. That's happening right now. I watched it yesterday. I climbed to a high mountain over here and watch them with my binoculars all morning, operating their bulldozers and destroying this land. And this, as I said, is the new frontier in green extractivism. This is what we're seeing now. This is what we're being told is that mining, open pit mining, strip mining is good, that it's valuable, that it is important for the land, that it's even environmentally friendly to destroy places like this because the lithium that they plan to extract here is meant to end up in electric car batteries. We all know the problems with fossil fuels. We all have followed the crisis of global warming as it's unfolded and become more and more serious. We're all concerned about that. But there's a right way to solve that problem and there's a wrong way. And the wrong way is to keep digging, as the banner says. Keep digging, it's green. Species extinction, climate chaos, water crisis, genocide, pollution, war, habitat loss, slavery. So this lithium mine is one part of a supply chain that provides the raw materials that go into electric cars. And that supply chain also includes cobalt mines, which have been in the news a lot recently. Most of, most of the world's cobalt comes from the Congo, where much of the mining is conducted by people who are working for less than a dollar a day in slave-like conditions, often dying regularly, people dying, people getting seriously sick and injured, and destroying the Congo jungle, the rainforest, one of the most important rainforests in the world, the largest rainforest in Africa. So there's a direct link between Thacker Pass, between northern Nevada, and what's happening in places like the Congo, and what's happening in places where they mine for nickel, like in Indonesia, in the Philippines, in these places where we've seen nickel mining begin to destroy the land and hurt the people and poison the fish, poison the water, poison the air. So when people stand up to protect Thacker Pass, they're not just standing up for this place, they're not just standing up for themselves and their own land, they're also standing up for 
the whole world. They're standing up for the planet. They're standing up for those other communities, those other beings, those other human beings, the fish, the water, the mountains, the streams, the rivers, all the birds, all the creatures who are being affected by this extraction-based economy all over the world. These struggles are all connected. And we're being told that there is a difference between this green energy, this electric vehicle revolution, and the fossil fuel economy that came before, that we all know is such a problem. We're being told that there is a big difference between electric vehicles and what happened previously. But we know that is not true. When you start researching this, it becomes very clear that this is not true. And I'll tell you one story that illustrates this. This Thacker Pass lithium mine, in order to extract the lithium out of the earth here, they plan to bring in sulfur to create sulfuric acid to burn the lithium out of the clay soil here. And that sulfur is going to come from oil refineries. Many of you have probably heard of the Alberta tar sands, the largest and most destructive industrial project on the planet. The Alberta tar sands are known for being high sulfur fuel. It's high sulfur oil. And so when that oil is sent to a refinery, a lot of sulfur is removed from it. And then that sulfur is sold to other industries such as this one. This is not a small amount of sulfur that we're talking about, that this project will require. It's for those who have been to New York City and seen the Empire State Building. Imagine two Empire State Buildings every year. That's how much sulfur they plan to bring in here two Empire State Buildings every single year coming from the fossil fuel industry directly from the oil refineries here for supposedly green energy to, to process the ore that is going to be ripped out of the ground by bulldozers running on diesel fuel by heavy equipment made out of steel. For those who don't know, the largest uh, iron ore mine, iron ore becomes steel and steel is really the backbone of an industrial economy in a lot of ways. The largest iron ore mine in the world is the Carajas mine in Brazil, and it's in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. But it's actually what used to be the Amazon rainforest, because thousands of square miles have been cut down around the, rain, around the mine to, uh, to allow them to, to dig the open pit, to allow them to uh, create charcoal for smelting the ore. So the raw materials that go into a mine like this, whether we're talking about this pole right here on their security tower, the, uh, the vehicles that you can see right here, this security shed that this gentleman is sitting inside, um, uh, the truck right here, all of these are made from raw materials that come from the earth. They come from the earth and they have costs associated with them. So when we are told this lie, that this is green, that this is good for the planet. We need to understand that the green that they are talking about here is money. The green that they are talking about is dollars. That's the green they're talking about. It's not the spring flowers coming up on the hillside. It's not the meadow greening up in the spring. It's not the first leaves coming onto the oak trees. That's not the green they're talking about. That's not the green they're protecting. They're protecting their wallets. They're protecting their investments. So for those who are just tuning in, I want to remind you again, we're here at Thacker Pass, Pahimaha in Paiute. It's just after 6 a.m. And two Paiute people, Doris, Doris Sam from the Fort McDermott Paiute Shoshone Reservation, tribal member, Doris is on the left here, and Dean Barlise, who is a spiritual leader, elder from the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe, Dean's here on the right, have made a choice to stand here today in prayer to pray for this land, and they're doing so nonviolently. They're doing so with good intentions in their heart. They're doing it for the future generations. They're doing it for those who came before. 
they're doing it for the water, for the non-human life forms, for all those who rely on the land, which is all of us. Can I get the it's all of us. Of how much water is used to process the lithium? So this mine would use, uh, the original number was 4.1 million gallons per day. But they actually revised that up recently, just in the last couple months. So it, it may be more like 4.5 million gallons per day. How much to process one ton of lithium? It depends on, whoops, almost dropped the phone. Sorry, people on the live stream. <laughs> um, it depends on what process they're using. There's multiple ways to get lithium. And the real water intensive way, the more water intensive way is brine, lithium brine extraction. That's different than what we're talking about here. But that requires about 500,000 gallons per one ton of lithium. <laughs> huge amounts of water. And that is, is dewatering and, and causing drought in huge areas of uh, Argentina and Chile, especially, but also in places like Tibet and Australia. And here in Nevada as well, at Silver Peak, there's a lithium mine south of here, the only operating lithium mine in the United States currently. And that mine is extracting massive amounts of water from the valley, and they want to double, double production there and double water use. So water is a big issue. I mean, here we are in the Great Basin. This is Nevada, the driest state in the United States. We're up here about a mile above sea level. The sun is just peeking over the horizon right now. You can see the light starting to creep across the Acker Pass. But uh, this, is a, this is a dry place. It snows here in the winter and you get some rains in the spring and the, and the fall, a bit of monsoon activity in the summer. But this is a very dry place. Over on this side is the Quinn River watershed. And this watershed is being over pumped it's already being over pumped. They're already taking more water than can be replenished by the amount of rainfall that happens here. So they're using fossil water. They're drawing down the water table here. Every year it gets lower and lower underground. That's not a plan with the future, but that's where they're pumping out the water from for this mine. In fact, a lot of the activity that's happening this morning and, uh, and that Lithium Nevada has been working on for the past months out here is uh, preparing for the water extraction. Many of you who are watching may have visited Sentinel Rock, which is this little dot right here. That's Sentinel Rock, also known as Nipple Rock. That's a traditionally and culturally important place, uh, a very powerful place. There have been a lot of gatherings up there to commemorate the 1865 massacre that took place here, here at Pahima at Thacker Pass. And just to the right of it, I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but right there, that is a new bulldozed line that Lithium Nevada has bulldozed across the whole length of Thacker Pass. Down here, those black dots right there, those are water pipes that they are beginning to install in the ground to pump that 4.5 million gallons per day to the mining operation, which would be in this direction. So the work has begun out here in earnest. Yesterday, there were about 30 workers on site. Um, there were uh, people operating uh, excavators, graders, bulldozers, bucket loaders, dump trucks, water trucks. And down this road behind uh, Dean Barlis and Doris Sam is the main area where they're doing work right now. It's the main area where Lithium Nevada workers are currently bulldozing and destroying the land. You can't see it from here, but from a higher up vantage point, they have already destroyed Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Had a technical difficulty there, but I'm back. So, once again, we're here at Thacker Pass. 
There's a prayer taking place this morning. And people are standing here in prayer for this land. Does anyone want to say hello on the live stream? Okay, everyone, I'm going to sign off for now. My hands are freezing. There's no police on site yet. There's uh, several workers here. They're just off on the side, just uh, observing, doing their thing. Um, Doris and Dean are here. They're, they are standing strong. They're standing in their prayer. They're probably pretty cold, but the sun is up now. The light is on them, and we're hoping that it'll be warming up here pretty soon. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. And this action is going to be continuing. We don't know how long we're going to be here, but Doris and Dean have told us that they are not planning to move unless they are forced to move by the police, unless they're hauled away. And that's the situation here at Thacker Pass. That's the situation here at Pahimaha. It's the situation all over the world. When the law makes it impossible when the corruption that I just wrote about in a recent article makes it impossible, when the corporate power makes it impossible for people to use the democratic process and the system, the law, the courts, the public commenting process, when the system makes it impossible for that to work, to protect justice, to protect the land, to protect the future generations, then people will have to do something else. People will have to take matters into their own hands. And that's how it has been for a long time, and that's how it will how, how it will always be. There will be people who will stand up for what's right, even though there are costs involved. So thank you to everyone watching. I see your comments coming in. Uh, I'm not able to respond to everything, but uh, please follow on Protect Thacker Pass. There's other pages, I believe, that are live streaming as well. Um, maybe our Protect Thacker Pass folks can share some of those links to the other pages, the other live streams and videos that are going out there on uh, Protect Backer Pass Facebook. Um, we're trying to get the word out about what's happening out here and let people know there is a bail fund, I believe, that is uh, going around, a link to help make sure that uh, Dean and Doris can get out and stay safe and get home. Um, and we're going to be continuing to share photos, videos, and more information. So thank you all for watching. I'm going to turn off the live stream for now, but not because the action is over. I just need to take a break here and get a little bit of water and I'll be back online soon. So yeah, thank you again for sharing. Thank you all for all the support. I know a lot of you have been out here before, have spent time on the land, know how important this place is, know why this is happening, why people are doing this, taking this action. And I cannot express enough my solidarity and appreciation and love for all of you, all of the people who stand up for this, for the people who are here, for Dean and Doris who are taking action. The birds are singing this morning and we're giving them that quiet opportunity to start singing. If we weren't here, the workers would already be getting started. The heavy equipment would be running, the bulldozers would be rumbling and you wouldn't be able to hear these birds. So we'll be back soon. Talk to you all soon. And thank you. Thank you.